De regreso aquí en Auto 060 y ahora vamos a hablar de un tema muy interesante para todos, es la reputación de las marcas eh, de los fabricantes de autos. So we're going to switch back to English because we have Eric Schiffer, uh, he's the chairman of Reputation Management Consultants. How are you, Eric? I'm doing well, Javier. Thank you very much. Nice to be here with you. No, thank you very much for taking the time and a very interesting study because we always think about the, the car uh, manufacturers and like at one point it's almost a personal decision, right? It's very subjective. But uh, your study that came out with the best and worst reputations obviously has much more than uh, much more methodology than that, right? There's a lot more methodology and you know what we do is we look at uh, many things including survey data but also the, the sentiment that people say uh, both offline and online and uh, you know and then we also look at you know data that relates to complaints uh, both to government agencies as well as to uh, consumer complaint side sites and we take all that into consideration to determine uh, these reputations and as you can see Fiat Uh, which owns many brands, uh, does not have a good one. Uh, they really don't. I mean, they're one of the worst in terms of reputation as well as in terms of consumer uh, confidence. So, uh, Eric, on, uh, you know. yeah, uh, sorry for the interruption, but so we're talking Fiat, the group, that for people who don't know uh, includes brands like Ferrari, Maserati, now Chrysler, and all the, the brands under Chrysler. Is that correct? Correct. And the, the brands that that have the bad reputations are Maserati um, as well as Chrysler. Ferrari has a great reputation. Uh, so just to let you know, uh, you know, I mean, that, they're the exception to the rule within the Fiat group. And, and uh, you know, I, I personally, uh, uh, you know, enjoy them as a personal brand, not, you know, so it's, it hurts me a bit to see this. <laughs> Because I do like Ferrari, but, it, but these are the facts. Yeah, no, of, of course. And, and nowadays, with all the data and information that flows freely on the on the web and like all these outlets, I mean, there's really no place to hide. And, and if that's what people are thinking, that's what people are thinking. I guess in the case of Ferrari, the Formula One team helps a lot, even though they haven't won in a while. Uh, but like as a, as consumers, that cars consumers. Um, the other brands, I mean, I know they have some problems, like Maserati had like really bad reputation before this study, so they're trying to build it up and like making it better. So what what yeah. are the factors that your study found that, that gave them the, the worst reputation? Well, I think it was the number of complaints. Um, you're right that Maserati, Maserati certainly had uh, problems even beforehand, but you know, they have They have problems with reliability. They've got problems with just responding to customer complaints. On, on the flip side, Ferrari is the, the standout amongst the Fiat group. And I had actually uh, toured the facility. Uh, they're, they're very forward thinking. They've got one of the most revolutionary plans for a high-end sports performance vehicle of any, of any organization uh, around. Uh, you know, and, and you know, and they're and they're constantly testing and getting feedback from customers, and they're very responsive to customers. On the positive reputation side, you see, um, you know, a company like, uh, you know, uh, Toyota. You also see, you also see, um, you know, uh, a company like Tesla that is extremely forward thinking. The, uh, you know fans of Tesla as well as consumers of the Tesla models love their cars, love it. They love the ride, they love the forward designs, they like the fact that they're helping the environment, and they like the image that, that the owner brings, which again is, you know, I mean, he is a, he's a maverick, he's a visionary, and he's three steps ahead of everyone else. Yeah, and uh, in this case, uh, Tesla, for example, just recently, last uh, the 4th of July weekend, there was a horrible accident in LA, a car, a Tesla Model S broke in half, it uh, hit a post, and like, yes. unfortunately, uh, the driver died, uh, he had stolen the car, I, from what I believe, from the dealership, but all these things, as again, as I was saying, all this free flow of information on the internet, it seems to me that it doesn't affect the people who really know the product, right? It doesn't. And, you know, you're always going to have problems. You, you can always have one-off issues. But the thing with Tesla is there's transparency. Now, let's compare that against uh, an organization like GM, okay? Here's an organization where they appointed the engineer to the position of CEO. This is an engineer who, during this period of time, uh, was aware that their product had serious problems, problems that resulted 
in the death of 13 innocent people. Yet none of that was disclosed to the public uh, at all. It's now being disclosed. But where were these people at during the time? I mean, it's very upsetting to many families. Yeah. But uh, but at the same time, we just, uh, I mean, this problem has been uh, going on for a few months, or I mean, like just the, the recalls. But then you see the sales reports, and they, they keep growing. So what does that tell about, again, like these uh, studies, and then like what people really think about uh, make the decision to buy a car? Well, it's a good question. I, I think what it says is they have a good advertising product uh, company that's it's advertising. I think it also says that the public... Uh, puts these things into perspective and recognizes that they've solved them. Um, and, that, and that GM has good financing in, in combination. I mean, they're a big, they've got good financing structure. Uh, but I don't think that you've seen the correlation yet between sales and the and the and um, these reports. I th I'd be interesting to see what happens over the next few quarters to see if there is a true correlation, because this really just happened. I mean, it'd be, no, I know, it'd be, yeah. It's, The incident with GM just happened within the last 30, 45 days. Yeah. Um, you know, and so I, I, mean, I want to see another quarter to make that correlation. Yeah, um, but uh, when, know, when this, when the similar problem happened with Toyota with the sudden acceleration thing with the Prius and other models, I mean, it did affect them a little bit, but I think the earthquake that happened in 2011 in Japan affected them even more. And Toyota, in your study now, it's like back on the top of the list, right? is you can come back if you focus on the right things, if you make a commitment to doing the right thing, if you're transparent with, with the public. Uh, GM is trying to do the same thing. We'll see what happens. I mean, you know, there's a criminal investigation that's ongoing with GM. This, this is, uh, they still don't have the facts. We don't know whether the CEO, who during this period was in charge of engineering, whether she was aware of it, and whether this is being covered up. The public doesn't know yet. They're still, the yeah. government is still getting to the bottom of it. Uh, and we don't know, again, what the impact will be. I know GM's trying to do the right thing now. They're certainly trying to make an active um, effort to, to do the right thing. Uh, but, but you know, do they have the right leader? Because if this leader knew what was happening then and was part of the cover-up, she must go. Yeah. Well, I mean, not to defend GM, but just like to give some facts. I mean, GM is a huge, huge company. And like everybody has to understand that when a car is built, there's like hundreds of suppliers that provide the parts. But you're right. I mean, the investigation has to be going on and like conclude whatever they discover. So can yeah, we well, go? And you're right. You're right. Up, and you're right about the parts. My point is, if they knew that the parts oh, of were course. Bad, Yeah. And they either didn't change it or they didn't inform the public about it, then, then that to me is criminal. Yeah, no, absolutely. That, that, that to me, you know, it, it requires that there's a change in leadership. Now, again, I, we don't know whether she was part of it or not. I mean, yeah. we just don't. And yeah, I mean, like, we'll find out. it's not the same situation, but when the Paul Walker accident happened with that Porsche, Uh, Carrera GT, I mean, people were blaming Porsche and like there were more uh, elements of evidence there that probably it wasn't the car, it was probably the people who were there. But again, it's an investigation is going on. So going back to your report, uh, on the best side, you also have on the top of the best side uh, of the best reputation for car manufacturers, you have Volkswagen, again, the group, Daimler Group, which uh, manufactures Mercedes-Benz and smart cars, Tesla that you already mentioned, Ford and Toyota, right? Yes. So is the Volkswagen Group on top of the list with all of the brands, or how does that uh, break out? Is it is it? Well, you know, Volkswagen, while their sales are a little, little bit slow um, uh, as a group, you know, they have some of the best, most reliable brands in the world, whether it's Volkswagen or Porsche, uh, you know, and, and they also have some of the best advertising. I mean, they're very forward-thinking on the advertising side. They're considered to be very reliable by the public it's a trusted brand and it's a brand that works and they invest in the future um you know this it's a smart organization they get it and they're not going anywhere well, same with jam with uh, the organization that owns mercedes-benz i mean this is a, this is an organization that's again invested in the future they're constantly innovating they know their customer they, they know what the customer wants and they're willing to give it to them They're, they're interested in innovating, and they understand how to brand well so that excellence comes through, not just in the product, but also in the branding. 
Yeah, we're talking to Eric Schiffer, uh, Chairman of Reputation Management, Co Management Consultants. And Eric, we only have like less than a minute here. Is there any way that uh, our audience can look for more uh, of this uh, very valuable information on the website or something like that? Absolutely. They can go and follow me on Twitter at Eric Schiffer. That's E-R-I-C-S-C-H-I-F-F-E-R. -F -F -E um, we'll be releasing this report that you're getting early um, to... Uh, You know, we'll be releasing this soon. Uh, and they can also go to reputationmanagementconsultants.com. Okay. And if you have like 30 seconds to give an advice to someone who is looking out for the car, I mean, I know it's a, a tough talk, but what, what would you Absolutely. say? I would say that, number one, um, do your homework online, uh, drive the vehicle, speak to people that have used the vehicle, talk to people that have had problems, ask the dealer to talk to someone that's had an issue with it. Um, and then at the same, and then at the end, go with your gut. Go with what excites you the most once you have all the facts. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. And again, there's always a ton of information, including, as he said, reputationmanagementconsultant.com. Thank you very much, Eric, for your time. Thank you, Javier. Bye. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting. Thank you.